so many things to talk about, Eric, obviously, but just you had to burn through timeouts just to keep Jimmy breathing. It's yeah. like in the last minute. Um, what it, where the, the, the Lakers' last real possession was right in front of you. What, what did you see and how angst-laden were you when Danny got that look? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, at, at the end of the day, I like those decisions. I mean, we had everybody in the paint. Um, you know, LeBron just uh, had, had, you know, a bunch of those possessions the fourth quarter where he was just getting to the basket, offensive rebounding, everything, you know, at the rim, you know, to the free throw line. Um, so we needed to bring not only a second defender there, a third defender. Then they cut, and, of course, Danny Green uh, is there. Um, you know, but there was, you know, a karma to it. I, I thought our just competitive spirit throughout the course of the game, you know, was, was great. And sometimes it's make or miss, and sometimes you need to be a little bit fortunate. Uh, we were, uh, but we also made a lot of plays. You know, particularly on the other end, Jimmy, uh, again, uh, his will uh, to win um, is remarkable. Um, and to do that in 47 plus minutes um, and take the challenge on the other end. This is every young player coming into this league uh, should study footage on Jimmy Butler, uh, the definition of a two-way player. Um, competing on both ends, five steals, and then making, you know, those big plays uh, down the stretch for us offensively. And I know guys have been telling Duncan ever since he got here, just shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Did you have any sense that tonight was going to be the night where it finally came together? No, you know, none of us, you know, really know. You just know uh, his makeup, his character. He's going to continue uh, to work his routes. Uh, you know, I thought he was just so persistent and their level of physicality on them uh, as well is nothing like the regular season or nothing like the first three rounds. Um, he just dusts himself off, uh, continues to run his routes with great force. Uh, he broke free a few times and he didn't break free a few times and still was able to, to put some pressure on him. But look, he's not only him, but K-9 and Tyler, they're, they're like, you know, sticks of dynamite. They can go off at uh, at any time, and and we needed that tonight. Malika, Spo, what was it? A conversation with Jimmy where you were like, "Well, we need you to take a break," and he said no, or was that the understanding going in? One, and then two, can you just describe or contextualize what you saw from Andre Godala on the defensive end down the stretch? Uh, if you're not really watching Andre. If you're just kind of looking at it like uh, with a broad spectrum, it, it appears that he's in three places at once, and that's part of his genius. Um, you know, they're, they're a great offensive team, so you need some guys that just have incredible instincts and have had a bunch of pressure-packed reps. Andre's had those. Jimmy's had those. Jay has had those. Bam is, is just turned 23, but it feels like he's had a bunch of those um, by the context of our last, you know, couple of years. Um, and we were, you know, we're pushed, you know, to have to make a lot of different kind of reads and plays, uh, you know, defensively. What was your first question? No. Um, no, this, this one was an understanding. Uh, I was looking for opportunities, you know, maybe to, to steal them a, a minute or two, you know, like we did last game. Um, when we got up, you know, double digits and they came right back, that was the opportunity and missed it. And at that point, we had already burned the boats. Next question is from Naveen Gangalani from the Philippines. Hey, Coach. Hey, congratulations. Hi. Congratulations in the win. There's this saying within the Miami Heat of burn the boats. And could you just talk a little more about what that means to you guys and how it plays a role in quote unquote heat culture? Uh, that's a, a longer story, and I'm sure everybody's heard it. Um, you know, it, more importantly, we're, we're here competing for a title. And that's, that's the most important um, storyline. Uh, 
and it's going to take, you know, everything we have, but this is everything that our guys in our locker room wanted. Um, it's this kind of competition between four lean, four lines, uh, two baskets. Uh, you can't uh, write <laughs> or print out uh, uh, the winner on this one. This one has to be earned, you know, between those four lines. And that, that's where our guys uh, thrive. Dan here. Well, after game three, it was Jimmy F. and Butler. I'm sure he's earned the f the, the full curse word at, at, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we're, we're all, we all just want to go back to our cave right now <laughs> and, and gather up. Uh, we're here for a purpose. He was remarkable, exceptional tonight, just from a competitive standpoint. I, I really mean that. The young, the draft is coming up and whenever a month they should study uh, Jimmy Butler as a two-way player. Um, but you know, we can't celebrate this too long. We got to we gotta move on and, and rest up and, and, and get ready for uh, another one. It's just inches us closer to our goal. That's it. When you say it's going to take everything, the image that comes to mind is him slumped over um, at the free throw. That's what it's all about. That's an image of a champion before you're a champion. Next question, Nick Friedel. Oh, to follow up on Jimmy, you praised him a lot over the last three months, but specifically in these last few finals games, how would you put into context his ability to raise the level of his game in the biggest of moments for your team? Well, he's the ultimate competitor. Uh, and when you're facing the ultimate competition, that's what happens. It, you hope that it brings out uh, a higher level than you can go just by playing normal competition. Um, you have to be a, a real competitor uh, for that to happen. And, and, and hopefully that's happening with our entire team right now uh, because we are being pushed and challenged by a, a very good team. Our guys are embracing that. Next question, Vincent Goodwill. Coach, you've been on the front end of some of those LeBron three-point explosions, you know, when he was on your team. How did you tell your players not, not to overreact when he started hitting the first three or first four and you didn't change up your defense? Did you just feel like you had to ride the wave of that and that it would sort of balance itself out? Or how do you stay cool during that? Look, great players are going to make big-time plays. And that's what this – level of the finals is all about can you continue to stay with it and find a way uh, to get the win at the end uh, we're not expecting it to be easy we're not expecting those guys to have C games you, know, you got to beat them you know you have to expect to beat teams when they're at their best uh, we're not running from that and uh, we know this has to be well earned next question Anthony Chang so I know this is secondary at this point, but the seven-man rotation uh, today is by the shortest you guys have used in the playoffs. Was that the plan going into it, or was it just the way you know Kendrick was rolling and, and the way Jimmy couldn't really take him off the court? Yeah, it was. It was more just the read. I had every you know every intention uh, to go with the rotation that we have been, uh, and possibly could go with that in Game Six. Okay. Uh, I'm done here, Spo. Okay. Uh, last one here, Gary. Hey, Spo, I know you tell your guys, you know, play to the buzzer and, you know, give it your all. But to see it in this moment, can you appreciate that? Or are you kind of too locked into this game to, under to see your guys, a lot of guys in their first time doing this, play to and give completely everything they have? Well, it's – we have a goal. We're fighting for a title. That's what it's going to require. And our guys have an understanding, um, you know, through the first two games uh, of this series, we realized, all right, this is a different level. Or we're going to have to get to a, to a higher level. Um, our guys are extremely competitive. So this level of play that the Lakers have, have brought is, is bring out, a, you know, something different. Um, but, you know, again, we, we, we can't sit up here and, and pat our back uh, too long. We got we to gotta gear up and get ready for, for the next one. Just 
inches us closer to the goal. That's it. All right. And the final question will be from David Aldridge. Bo, uh, Ray hits a shot in 2013 off a scramble to give you life. The night the ball swings out to a guy who's almost set a finals record for threes, who's wide open. I know this is your profession, but how do you, how do you live with make or miss to kind of be a defining moment for everything that you do? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's the profession. This is, this is the world uh, we are fortunate enough to be a part of, the profession uh, the coaches chose, uh, the profession that our Warriors competitors in there have earned the right uh, to be. And, you know, you try to create the karma of the game as much as possible. Uh, and you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes it is make or miss. We'll start with Tim in the back. Oh. You walk the way you walked in and the way you're exhaling sort of gives me the answer already. But how how tired are you at this point? How tired were you in those moments where you're slumped over the board before the free throws with, and then suppose burning timeouts to get you more air? Like mm -hmm. just what's left right now? Nothing. Uh, I left it all out there on the floor along with my guys. And that's how we're going to have to play from here on out. Um, like I always say, it's, it's win to win for us. But this is the position that we're in. We like it this way. We got two more in a row to get. Next question, Nick Fidel. Jimmy, you've obviously had plenty of big games in your career. But why do you think in this moment on this stage, you've been able to continually go to the well and lift your own performance night to night? Because that's what my team asks of me. That's what they need me to do. And um, I think Coach Pat and Coach Bo brought me here for that reason, to help us win games. And um, I have to continue to do that for two more games. I know that I'm capable of it, <clears throat> but I got a hell of a group of guys around me that made my job a lot easier. I'm fortunate for those guys because when I'm passing them to make shots, when I get beat going to the rim, they're there. Um, so we're in this thing together, but they give me a, a lot of confidence to go out there and hoop. Dan, here. Jimmy, um, throughout the, since you guys were down 3-1, Spo has talked about it, you've talked about it, that it's like, it's not just survive one more. It's this is part of our story to get to where we want to go. Where, where, where does that confidence come from, and how did that play out today? Look, man, I, I can say it every time I'm up here, but we live for these moments. Like, the work that we put in, we built for this. We've been doing this all year long. This didn't just start in the bubble. Uh, we've been playing together win, loss, draw, whatever, we're in this thing together. And that's what's going to win is games. Um, I think night in or night, it could be anybody. It could be Bam. It could be hopefully Gorn. Like, we, we're, we're so together when we're out there on the floor, off the floor. That's why we win, because everybody wants everybody to be successful. Next question, Vincent Goodwill. Jimmy, you've been defending LeBron for a number of years, uh, going back to Chicago. When he's hitting the jumper like that, how do you stay calm and stay disciplined, you know, when he's hitting the jumper and the Lakers keep coming? How do you keep your team sort of at an even kill and not sort of give, getting caught up in the moment? I mean, if you're the best player in the world, you're supposed to be able to do that. Um, we keep our head high knowing that he's going to hit some tough ones. That's what really, really, really great players do. Um, but we ain't backing down. We ain't shying away. Um, we can go on the other end and do what we do. I think he had a, a hell of a performance tonight along with AD, the whole team. But we still fight. We in it to win it. We're not backing down. We're not scared of nobody. Next question, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Jimmy, you've been saying throughout the series that to get to where you want to go, you always have to go through a LeBron James team. And now you're living that moment, play to play, possession to possession. And tonight was just epic with you two making play after play at each end. What's that like for you to do, especially on this stage in 47 minutes of basketball? I think it's easy whenever I have the group of guys that I have around me. 
And then I have the coaching staff that believe I can play at a high level. Coach Pat brought me here to play at a high level. Um, I got so many people in my ear just telling me to keep doing what I've been doing. Um, play basketball the right way, and we're going to end up winning. So that, that's why I smile, knowing that we're always going to play the right way, and we're always going to live with the result because we're going to uh, leave it all out there on the floor. Did you know that when you went up against the LeBron James team in this environment that you would play the way that you're playing right now? I know that I'm capable of it. Um, I believe in my, my skill set and my talent. Um, my teammates do as well. Um, but uh, it, this, this not just me. Duncan had a hell of a game. K-9 came in and did what K-9 did. Bam had a huge one. All of us, all of us were the reason that we won this game. And it's going to be the same way for the next two. Jeff in the back. Jimmy, I know you just mentioned Duncan's game, and, and I know you've been in his ear a, a little bit. Uh, how was he able to get some shots tonight when they make it so difficult for him to even get a shot off? And you know what have you been saying to him? To stop running from the basketball. You can't shoot the ball if you don't have the ball. Um, I think he gets lost in trying to get other people open when everybody's going to react to him, probably more so than they're going to react to me. A three is worth more than a two. So as long as he's coming to the ball, shooting the ball when he's open, when he's not open, that's the Duncan Robinson that we need, that we want, because that's how he's been playing all year long. And um, we're going to need to be even more aggressive in game six. Malika? Jimmy, you've talked before about how you recover and how your recovery team is elite, and that's what allows you to do this. What does your next day look like, especially as, as these 35, 40-minute games start to add up? To tell you the truth, I don't know. I'm going to go back and, and talk to Armando. And whatever he says do, I guess I got to do. I really hate when people tell me what to do, by the way. But uh, I know that he has my best interest at heart. And um, he'll probably tell me what to do in Spanish as well. Hell no. Next question, Anthony Chang, Miami Herald. Jimmy, in game four, the Lakers' big adjustment was throwing AD. And LeBron, are you pretty much the entire game? What, what was the adjustment tonight for you to that coverage? Was it was it more just be willing to take the those jump shots when they go under on those screens? Was that part of the the change for you today? Just stay aggressive. I don't know what they're going to throw at me on any given night, but I think whatever you throw at me, it's not going to work because if I'm open, I'm going to shoot it. If I'm not, I'm going to pass it to Duncan or Tyler or K9 or Bam or Jay, and they're going to make the shot. So. As long as we stay together and play basketball the right way, no matter how they guard me, um, I'm going to make the right play. Gary, here in the middle. Jimmy, you guys were up 11, and they made it kind of a, a big run and went up one, and you guys' offense looked a little scattered. What did you guys do to get back on your feet and kind of counter that? Um, I started to put people in the positions that they need to be put in. Um, I think I rushed a lot. I didn't have guys knowing where they were supposed to be. And um, and that's my fault because, you know, coach is telling me to play and I'm not echoing it down the line. And I can't um, let that happen because then you go on a 10-0 run or whatever they went on, you know, we'll watch it, we'll, we'll be better. But we got to know that I, I have to let everybody know where they're supposed to be at. Rachel? Jimmy, do you believe there's carryover from one game to the, to the other and that these guys believe they were less than 30 seconds from winning a title and you guys ripped that away from them and you could see that on everyone's faces in the final 10 seconds of the game? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they wanted to win, thought they was going to win coming into it, as did we. Uh, but it was a, it was a hard-fought game. I think it's going to be even harder for us next game. But I like our chances. Sam in the middle. Jimmy, kind of up that Sam Alley, uh, you never lack for motivation. But I do wonder, when you look out there and you see Lakers family members who are on the brink of celebration, you know that uh, Malika put a picture out about the confetti machine being right next to the court. And you know what you ripped away from them. Is it a little bit sweeter? Uh, not really. I don't be paying attention to them over there. I don't pay attention to the uh, confetti machines. I do pay attention to Rondo San Pierre, though. That's my guy. Uh, other than that, I'd be so locked in on a game. I'd be locked in on uh, 
my squad um, because we we had a win. We had a win. So for these next two, we gonna um, win the trenches. <laughs> Our last question tonight will be from Clay Ferrero, Channel 10, Miami. Hey, Jimmy, you said in the post-game interview, uh, you got to be a lot better down the stretch in particular. Uh, how do you recenter after, you know, what was an emotional performance and you said a draining performance, there's nothing left. How do you recenter and kind of rejuvenate yourself heading into what you know is going to be a tough game six? This is over with. Um, we got to get better, even from, from wins. I don't think we ended the game the way we were supposed to. We didn't rebound when we needed to. We got lucky. You know, luck is a part of everything, and that's what that was. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm taking the dub. But uh, I think going into the next one, we got to play even more perfect. We got to secure the ball. We got to get back. We got to do everything right to give us a chance to win. Can you, from, from your perspective, just describe I mean, you saw Jimmy do this earlier in the series with a 40-point triple-double, do it now with a 30-whatever he had triple-double. Him bend over the railing there before a couple of free throws late, Spo burning timeouts to try to get him some air. How, from your estimation, how good was he? Uh, that's, that's, that's Jimmy Butler. Uh, that's our max player. That's who we go to in these moments. And... Uh, He's been producing, so you know we just got to keep keep contributing the best way we can, and just let him take over the show. Dan, over here. Bam, um, Jimmy. Throughout these finals, has said, you know, we're gonna be need to be damn near perfect to 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 win these games. How close to perfect has he been in these two wins? Man, uh, he's been as close to perfect as you possibly can get, and. Uh, you know, on my part, I got to be better for for him, so he doesn't have to carry that load as much. So, you know, my my whole mindset is, uh, I got to be better for 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 Jimmy, for my team. So, uh, good contribution. Um, just keep stacking these, keep building on them. Next question is from La Gazzetta, Italy. Hey, Bam Davide from Italy here. You just said you need to get better. Are you 100% or close to it, or are you still sore from the injury? And what uh, do you think you need to get better? Uh, just rehabbing. You know, that's, that's, that's been a big thing. You know, just keep rehabbing and uh, just, just trying to forget about it. You know, uh, when you get in the finals, I don't think anybody's completely healthy, 100%. So, you know, I, I can't. I can't dictate how I play because I'm injured. You know, I got to go out there and still play like, like, like I am. Next question, Clay Ferrero, Channel 10, Miami. Hey, Bam, the camera kind of caught you shaking your head on the way out, and you just said, you know, I got to be better. Is that, is that kind of what you were thinking in your mind? And, and what specifically do you have to do better heading into game six? Thanks. Oh. Uh, I just got to be more aggressive. And, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of times uh, I just got to make the right reads. It's, it's, it's nothing too, too major, just uh, minor tweaks. But uh, I'm going to bounce back. So we're we going to figure it out. Malika? Bam. Ooh. Wow. Sorry. Uh, when Jimmy Butler had that first game that kind of put a lot of people on notice, you were watching from the sidelines. What's the difference for you between being out there with him as he's doing it and watching him and taking it in as he's doing it? Um, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, I'm gassing him up. <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm putting that battery in his back. You know, it's a lot of times I tell him don't pass. <laughs> and uh, it, 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 but it comes from the heart, you know. I, I want him to be great. I want him to do something special, and you know, he's been doing it. So he just has to keep being special. I'm gonna keep gassing him up. If he's gonna keep playing out like that, we're gonna keep getting W's. I'll be the biggest cheerleader on the team. Next question, Anthony Chang, Miami Herald. Yeah, I mean, you guys are on Duncan to shoot and keep shooting no matter what. Was it only a matter of time before you had a game like this in this series? And how big is it for you guys as just creating space in the paint for you? And uh, it's just big because uh, just, 
Oh, uh, it just depends. But we uh, we we keep forcing him to shoot it, and you know sometimes he gets caught in this awkward situation. Do I pass or shoot? And you know we we always tell him shoot first and then pass later. So we just gonna keep doing that, and uh, you know he keep hitting shots, keep keep making the shots he he's shooting, and just keep building his confidence. Uh, that's big for Dunk. You know, I feel like he's waking up in this series. Rachel? Bam, what have you learned about playing in an NBA Finals that you didn't know in game one? Um, every every possession matters. I feel like that's the, that's the biggest thing that I learned. You know, you can go from being up five to down two in a matter of, like, three possessions, you know, so or two possessions. It just depends. So uh, I think that's my biggest thing on the NBA Finals. Next question is from Naveen Gangalani from the Philippines. Hey, man. What's it like when you know you have to switch between Anthony Davis and LeBron James, especially that you're coming back from injury? Is, is it like in your mind you're already trying to calculate where LeBron might go or where AD might go? What's like the defensive tendencies you have to think through? Uh, defensive ten tendencies? Yeah, or the what you have to think in your mind and analyze, how do you analyze the situation when you go up against those guys? Oh, you just got to make every catch tough. and you, They just got to see hands. You got to be active. So I feel like that's the, that's the biggest thing between those two. You just got to make the catches tough, try to wear on them, and uh, try to get them tired. Next question, Christos Saltis from Greece. Hello, Bam. How important for you is it to take the momentum about uh, game six? Say again? How important for you is to take the momentum from uh, that uh, win to, to the game six? Uh, what are we going to do with the momentum of game six? The momentum of that win for the game six. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a win. So, like we said, we know we can do it. We're trying to do something special. So, uh, we just got to keep putting our hard hats on and keep playing like we've been playing. Well, Thank glad. You. Game. Next question is from David Perez, He TV. Bam, obviously Duncan and Nunn sort of playing with a lot of confidence today. What do you think a lot of the younger guys on the team can take away from a moment like this, being able to pull out one of these tight games in the final? No, anything is possible. You know, you like I said, uh, long as long as the people in our organization, organization, and everybody on the staff and the players believe, we got a chance to do anything. And I truly believe that. I truly feel like everybody believes from us to, to the top of the organization. Do you have anything else, Rob? Last question from Zoom is Andres Lopez. Thank you. Bam, last time we spoke, um, we spoke about how you guys are 3-1 and you said that it's not the first time that a comeback has happened. We posted that on our social media and I just wanted to read you one of the comments we got. Uh, and I quote, much respect to Miami, but Bam Adebayo can start a new religion with all that faith, faith he has on his team. Can you please talk about the faith that you have on this team and how you can do anything if you believe, like you just said? Just, just because if, if you don't have any belief in anything that you can't do, then you're going to second guess yourself every time. And, you know, just, just, just having belief and just having faith and just visualize yourself you know, succeeding and being successful, I feel like that's, that puts positive, positive vibes in the air. You know, you never know. So my, my point is, um, like he said, I could, he said I could start a, a religion. Hey, man. Damn religion just started there. So uh, just keep believing. And like I said, anything can happen. A little bit more persistent tonight about just getting to the ball um, and getting to my spots. So... That helps, obviously. It also helps to see some go. Um, just builds the confidence more. Thank you. All right, up next, we have David Wilson with the Miami Herald. Go ahead, David. 
Hey, Duncan. Um, I guess first, just Jimmy in the, the final two minutes, really. Um, he was great, obviously, all night, but he hadn't scored for a while. In those last two minutes, though, I think he scored eight in a row to, to basically win it for you guys. Um, even when he, I guess, just what did you think of that? <laughs> I mean, that's Jimmy. Um, you know, he, he took us home. Just does whatever it takes to win and made some huge plays both sides of the ball. Uh, he just willed it. You know, there's, it's not always pretty, but he just finds a way. Um, just, I'm just thankful he's in our locker room. I know we, we kind of like think of it maybe as a little bit of a cliche, all the, the fitness stuff you guys talk about, the heat culture. Um, but in this series, I mean, I think one of the images that, that's going to stick with people is Jimmy kind of draped over the railing uh, after he took one of those fouls, catching his breath. Obviously, you're running, I don't know how many miles a game. Just how important has that been in this series, the, the level of fitness that you guys feel like you have? We, we, uh, we wear that with pride. You know, we, we think it's an advantage in every series uh, that we play in. And, um, you know, we, we've talked all about it, emptying the tanks, whatever it takes. Um, you know, so it was – tonight was a, a battle. It required everything we had. And uh, we're just thankful to, to come out on the other side with a, with a win. Curious, right, do they, me, uh, go ahead, do they David. track how far do they track how far you're running in these games? In some of these, where you're running around screens, like is there some of that tracking uh, that you are aware of? I don't know if they have that uh, SBU data set up uh, in the bubble. I'm not sure. Gotcha. Yeah. You know what, like you were doing in the regular season per game? Yeah, I think on I think on offense, just on offense, it was like three plus mile or four miles a game maybe I, I don't know exactly yeah but a lot <laughs> thanks all right Duncan I believe you have two there in person with Scott and Jeff go ahead guys um I think after game two or three I can't remember which game it was Jimmy is sort of part of this news conference to say that we still believe in Duncan like he's gonna have one of these games where he just goes off you know, he didn't have a great shooting at that night, whatever game that was. Did that get back to you that he said that in the news conference? And just in general, the fact that you know, these guys have so much confidence. Does that affect you? Um, of course, it affects me. The, the news conference specifically did not, but um, after game two, he, uh, we had like a little um, a meeting later at night um, in his room. Myself and I had me over and we just chopped it up, talked. And, um, you know, he's. He's hard on me, but it's because he expects a lot. And I welcome that. I love that. You know, this whole team just wants to be aggressive and to do my job. Um, you know, I, I thought I didn't do it well enough, really, in those first two. And uh, I was disappointed in that. But at this point, I can only control what you can control. And, and that's these games. And now it's Sunday. So I just got to go out and, and do what I do. Just the two of you. And uh, hit Armando, who's a, who's a trainer. Yeah. Duncan, I know shoot or shoot, that kind of thing, but one, sometimes they don't go down, and two, they make it so difficult for you to, to get free. Well, what is sort of the mental and physical challenge that you go through to not let that get you down? Yeah, you know, Spo, Coach Spo says it to me all the time, persistence, and uh, that's, that's what it's all about for me. Um, you know, if, if you're relentless throughout a game, You'll, you'll get your looks. And uh, obviously, you know, they've done a really good job scheming to take things away. But for me, it's it's just all about finding a way, whatever it takes to get to my spots. Um, and, you know, if, if you just continue to do that, eventually you'll, you'll have your openings um, and also you'll, you'll wear on them. You know, you'll, you'll be able to find um, spots here and there where you can get some daylight. And then for daylight for you, what does that mean? Is it like just a matter of inches? Just catching the ball. If I, if I catch the ball and I can see the room, um, it's it's going up pretty much. <laughs> All right, next up we have Mark Schwartz with ESPN. Go ahead, Mark. Duncan, as Mike Breen put it tonight, LeBron James and Jimmy Butler were throwing haymakers at each other for minute after minute down the stretch. What was that like to be a part of, and how did Jimmy come out on top? Um, you know, it's, you don't necessarily notice it when you're in it like that. Um, I know obviously they're, both of them were playing very well. Um, but you don't necessarily like see it from that bird's eye view when you're entrenched in it. But obviously, you know, Jimmy's just will, uh, determination, uh, and it's just his, his tendency to make big time plays and big time games. Um, 
you know, he just, he just made him over and over again tonight. And what was it like when you saw him slumped over that railing? You were right next to him, put it, put your hand on his back when he did. What were you thinking? I was just telling him, take, take your time. Take your time. Don't rush it. We, obviously, we needed the free throws. So, um, you know, he, he's obviously emptied the tank, and he, he does whatever it takes to win. And uh, we all just try to follow suit. All right, and final question goes to Wes Lammy. Go ahead, Wes. Duncan, seven made threes in this finals game. Only Ray Allen and Steph have hit more in a finals game. Um, but for you, can you describe more about the composure of that last maybe minute of the game, the way you guys were able to just keep it? Yeah, I thought it was it was some growth for us. You know, we've, we've won a bunch of them, uh, close ones like that in these playoffs. But we dropped the uh, game four um, in, in a game that we thought we, we really could have won. So um, I, I thought it showed some maturity, some growth, uh, and also just a, a will to win. Hello, Tyler. Congrats on the win. What was uh, the main factor for tonight's win, and how safe do you feel when uh, Jimmy Butler is on the court? Um, focus is tonight. We just you know to you know play our game for a full 48 minutes. You know we know how hard it's going to be. You know we're down you know three one coming into this game, and you know we our backs are against the wall, and we you know we have to respond. We have to win or go home. So. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, Jimmy. Jimmy said, "Win or win." You know, so we don't really have an option at this point. And you know, tonight we left it all out there, and we're gonna have to do that the next two games. And also, you play very aggressive. Another one uh, night in, on defense. You keep the momentum for for game six. Yes, um, you know, just you know, making them feel us on the defensive end. You know, getting into them. You know. Uh, knowing our coverages, knowing our schemes, and you know the biggest thing is to rebound. You know, keep them off the glass. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have David Wilson with the Miami Herald. Go ahead, David. Hey, Tyler. Um, Jimmy obviously was great all night. He'd kind of hit a little bit of like a, a scoring drought though there for a little while before he scored those those eight in a row to basically close it out. Um, I know you guys just know what he's going to do in the fourth quarter, but did, I don't know, did he say anything? Did he did he have kind of a moment there where he was like, I got this, anything like that? Um, no, not tonight. Uh, we just know, like you said, what, he, what he's capable of and you know, what he's going to do when the fourth quarter does come. Um, and, and we've seen it, seen it again tonight. Um, just willing us to a win on both, both sides of the floor. And I'm, I know, like, you're you're in the game. You're you're trying not to get taken up by the moment, but you know, that's that's an all-time performance by Jimmy. A 40-point game by LeBron. Just this series is. You know, a lot of people maybe thought it was done when it was 2-0. Just how crazy was it to be in a game like that tonight? All right, next up we have Shannon Irish with Heat TV. Go ahead, Shannon. Hey, Tyler, what did you think about Duncan's performance tonight um, and his big shooting moments? Yeah, uh, Duncan was huge again for us tonight. You know, every time he shoots, you know, we feel like it's going in. And, uh, you know, we want him to be aggressive. You know, we want him to continue to, to shoot balls. You know, almost every time he touches it, you know, we just want him to get, continue to shoot the ball. You know? Make sure his confidence is high, and we, we know what he's capable of. And tonight, he's showing everybody what he can do on the big stage. All right, next up, we have Manny Navarro with The Athletic. Go ahead, Manny. Uh, hey, Tyler. Uh, just physically, you know, I know you guys had a couple days off there, but Jimmy played 47 minutes. The, the, just the defensive effort that you guys are putting forth with every single one of these games, having to guard LeBron and so forth. How do you feel physically? Uh, we feel good. We want more. You know, we knew how hard this was going to be. Um, you know, coming into this, and, you know, it's not going to get any easier for us. We're not looking for help. And, you know, we're down. We're still down three two, and you know, our backs are against the wall. So we have, we have to continue to play, you know, big minutes and you know, to get the job done. 
And then obviously what it might mean if you guys could get Goran back, uh, you know, I know obviously he, he's fighting to come back still, but if what that kind of lift might provide if he can do it for game six. Yeah, um, we all know, you know what he's capable of and what he brings to our team. So, you know, if Goran's back out there, we, we, we hope he is. But, you know, at any point, you know, we hope he can get back and, you know, help us as, as much as he can. Thanks. All right, next up we have Tab Deportes, Puerto Rico. Go ahead. Hi, Tyler. Congrats for the win. What is the message that you want to say to the people who believe the series ended today? You know, not the really. Uh, everybody you know, is counting this out you know, since the beginning of the playoffs. Or, you know, we, we don't really care what people have to say. You know, it's, it's still 3-2, so I'm sure there's still people counting this out. You know, we're not going anywhere anytime soon. We have, you know, Two more games to win. You know, we know that the job is not done. Thank you. And last question, back to David Wilson. Go ahead, David. Hey, Tyler. Um, you guys were running a lot of that horn action tonight. It seemed like to to maybe get uh, AD away from Jimmy. Just how effective do you feel like that set was for you guys to kind of um, you know get some of the the favorable matchups? Yeah, um, it was very effective for us. You know. Anything we can to, you know, make it easier on Jimmy where he can get downhill and, you know, get into a playmaking or scoring position is, is what we want to do. Um, that was just, you know, one set that uh, has helped us especially tonight. Hello, Kendrick. Uh, this win was the biggest of uh, your playoff run so far. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this is an elimination game. We lose, season over, so backs against the wall, we can't put. And also about your performance, both uh, for you personally and as a team. How pre how prepare mentally about uh, that game? Uh, we prepare. Um, I mean, we put in the game plan daily. Uh, we make adjustments. You know, we try to go in with a clear mind and focused on exactly what we need to do and uh, not have any empty minutes. Thank you very much. All right. Next up, we have Manny Navarro with the Athletic. Go ahead, Manny. Hey, congrats on the win, Kendrick. Uh, you know, there was only seven-man rotation tonight. Obviously, uh, Spoke kind of tightened it up. Just physically, what it felt like to be battling out there with just seven guys, and, and how do you feel after this game? I'm a little tired, but that's what it takes. Uh, you got to play to exhaustion you know, to get a win. That's what it takes, and that's what we're going to do. And then for you uh, individually, uh, obviously, with a lot of big buckets there, just how good that felt to sort of contribute and help. Uh, with a lot of big buckets there. I know you haven't had a chance to play a lot, but tonight you, you did get a chance and you and you delivered. Yeah, man. Um, that's, all, that's, what I, that's what I want to do. Uh, I want to come through, uh, make shots, make plays, um, and cause my way and give us some relief buckets. And uh, I'm going to come through tonight. Shut up. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. All right, next up we have Shannon Iris with Heat TV. Go ahead. Hi, Kendrick. The last few minutes were back and forth between Jimmy and LeBron. How special was it um, to see Jimmy's performance tonight and to have him on your side to get this win? Well, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, I'm not the type of player and person Jimmy is, and he, he's one of those players, uh, one of the best in the league. And uh, he, he showed that tonight, uh, what he can do on both ends. Of the <laughs> All right, next up we have Brandon Tobin. Go ahead, Brandon. Kendrick, uh, the days between games, are you, uh, when you're trying to bounce back uh, out of a performance like the last game to this game, is there anybody you're leaning on? Is it a lot of you mentally? What, what are you tapping into to, to have a great performance like tonight? Uh, immensely, uh, myself. Uh, personally, just, uh, knowing, just clearing my mind, have a clear mind. Um, you know, just visualize the game and the things you're going to do. Uh, that's pretty much how I focus and get ready for the game. <clears throat> All right, next up, we have Ferdinand Rivera from Puerto Rico. Go ahead. Hey, Kendrick. How difficult has it been to assume the role of Dre has been difficult, or do you feel comfortable in it? Uh, I'm a player that makes plays. I feel very comfortable in the role that I'm in. And, uh, my team and coaches have great confidence in me. All right, next up, we have Wes Lammy. Go ahead, Wes. Okay, none. Um, just following up with that, did you feel in terms of your comfortability, did you feel you were building confidence throughout that first half in any way? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, just getting getting in and making plays, being aggressive. That's most important is being aggressive because um, I mean, we know who who we uh, going at on offense, and um, sometimes that players guard me, so I have to be aggressive and make plays for for that second unit. All right, and final question. We have Tab Deportes, Puerto Rico. Go ahead. Hi, congrats for the win. The coach say that every young player saw videos of Jimmy Butler before entered the league because he's the definition of two players side. What means for you playing aside him and learn from him? I love playing with Jimmy. Uh, two-way player, like you said. Um, that's the type of player that I am too. Uh, two-way player, play, make plays and, and take pride in defense. So uh, we love guys like that here in Miami. And um, just glad we got a win tonight. Look forward to the Kendrick, we have a final question here. Uh, Mark Schwartz with ESPN. Go ahead, Mark. Kendrick, what is it that allows Jimmy to sustain that level of performance at the end of a game where you have a LeBron James oh, yeah. three-time champion in his way trying to deny him, and he's played 47 minutes? How does he sustain and win in that environment? About Jimmy Butler. Yes. It's Jimmy Butler. That's what he do. 